Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The highest ranking member of the Catholic Church to be found guilty of abuse is going to prison. I'm Laura Podesta with details on Cardinal George Pell's sentence and reaction from the victim he sexually abused. No, I'm not standing in a snow covered field. I'm standing on a snow covered roof. I'll tell you how the county's trying to keep these roofs clear of snow coming up. Three days since the North Gym roof collapsed, five days since the South and staff here are still working to make this fitness complex safe. I'm Cody Boyer here at MSU talking specifically with students and parents to hear their voice coming up. Good morning to you and welcome to your Wednesday. It is coming up on 630. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. And our top story for you here, if you use a Verizon cell phone in Gallatin County, don't expect 911 calls to work the way you expect. Yeah, Gallatin County says that due to a Verizon problem, those calls are being routed to the 911 center's non-emergency lines. Because of that, when you get through, you should immediately tell the dispatcher uh, that you are making an emergency call. Give the location of your emergency. Now, if you get a busy signal when you call 911, hang up and call again. Verizon won't say when it may have that problem fixed. Good to know. Absolutely Good to know true, those yeah. things. And as we mentioned a moment ago, the highest ranking member of the Catholic Church has, found, has been found guilty of abuse and is heading to prison. Today in Australia, Cardinal Pell was sentenced to six years behind bars for the sexual abuse of children. CBS's Laura Podesta tells us what his accusers are saying in reaction to that news. This means that I sentence you to a total effective sentence of six years imprisonment. Demonstrators outside an Australian courtroom clearly emotional as a leading Vatican official is sent to prison. Cardinal George Pell, once one of the Pope's closest advisors, was told he'd be spending the next six years behind bars for sexually abusing two choir boys. The crime happened in 1996 when Pell was Archbishop of Melbourne, Australia. Today we sent a, a message that our children are important and their lives matter. Vivian Waller represents one of Pell's victims. She read a statement on his behalf. I appreciate that the court has acknowledged what was inflicted upon me as a child. However, there is no rest for me. Pell maintains his innocence and will appeal the court ruling on June 5th. Seen in this video from 2016, he responds to the accusations that he cornered the 13-year-old boys, accusing them of drinking communion wine, then forcing them into a sex act. Madness. The judge said he'd considered Pell's age, 77, and his health in determining the sentence. The Vatican says it's also pursuing its own investigation into the crimes. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, only one of the two victims Pell is accused of abusing in 1996 testified in this trail. The other died of a drug overdose in 2014. Pell will be eligible for parole after serving three uh, years, eight months of his six-year sentence. Wow. Matt joins us now, and the snow is a coming. Yeah, uh, it is. Certainly west of the divide. You can look at the uh, area roadways west of the divide. Certainly snow on the ground. Look how shiny the road is there. Yeah, yeah. a little wow. slick it looks like. Yeah, there will be some ice out there for sure. Temperatures holding into the 20s. We've had periodic snow showers uh, in Butte throughout the morning, and we're starting to see that uh, slide a little closer to us uh, in uh, areas west, east of the divide. Our temperatures are going to hold into the 20s. It looks like we're going to be dealing with pockets of snow through the afternoon and evening. That may make for a dicey commute both for the lunch hour and your evening commute. We're going to talk more about your timing and all this coming up in a few minutes. Thank you for that, Matt. Now 6.33. Now let's stay right on topic. All of the snow that's dumped on Butte recently has created plenty of ice on some of Butte Silverbow's buildings. Yeah, MTN's John Amy tells us how maintenance crews continue to try to keep snow and ice clear from building drains to avoid possible damage to those buildings. Butte Silverbow's building maintenance department is fighting to keep the ice and snow off of buildings. It's, it's a battle with Mother Nature and uh, she still seems to be winning. And she's made a few large icicles on some of the city building drains. Even heated cables inside these drains have failed to stop the freezing. 
and it does keep a little bit of it open, but with the below zero temperatures at night all this month, it's just been building up and blocking up. The city even hired a few private contractors to help clear the snow and ice from the roofs after Butte was hit with record snowfall. We've had a few leaks throughout this period, but we've been able to get on top of them right away and maintain them. So I'm on top of the Butte Business Development Center here off Mercury Street, and there's about a foot of snow all across this massive roof. And that's why it's important for the county to stay on top of trying to keep the ice clear because it can do a lot of damage. And what happens is some of these older buildings aren't insulated as well, so they're melting at all times in between. Once it gets to a certain point, if it can go over that line where that roofing is, it can certainly saturate down into the buildings. Hoping warmer weather will melt some of this snow and ice from the roofs. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Also, local contractors report being booked a week in advance to clear roofs of uh, private homes and businesses as well from that snow. Now let's stay on topic. Mm -hmm. Once again, three days ago, the roof at Montana State University's North Gym collapsed. Now two days prior, the South Gym caved in. Fortunately, no one was injured in either incident, and the University Fitness Center has been shut down. MSU is still trying to figure out the cause. In the meantime, students at the school are a little on edge. MTN's Cody Boyer took his camera and his microphone to get a sense of what's been happening on campus. At first, I didn't like actually know how bad the damage was. Um, in the emails, they were just saying that the roofs had collapsed, but from just the ground, I couldn't tell um, how bad the damage was. But coming up here, um, it's pretty shocking. A couple of my buddies were in there practicing a couple hours before it happened, so just like crazy stuff. And like, there's people in there 18 hours a day, and nice to see that no one got hurt. Being up here, you actually see like the devastation that happened and how like lucky that nobody was even in the buildings when it, when it collapsed. When I first got here, they were just opening up the newer part of the gym, so to think that they just worked on that and there's older buildings here, uh, kind of something that sits in the back of your mind as you're sitting there in class. <laughs> My older son uh, played lacrosse, and the teams would use these gyms. When I first heard about it, I was really surprised that we even had flat top buildings here in this kind of environment where their snow accumulates. Yeah, I think for all the older buildings, people are very sketched out now. Now that's something in the back of everyone's mind that that might be a problem. And so I definitely think it's something that the school needs to address. Kind of makes me a little nervous about some of the other buildings and stuff. I know they're checking them out, but it makes me a little nervous. Pretty crazy thing, and that's something that uh, I'm usually in the gym. Like, I try to go most days, or uh, I have class in there, so it really throws a wrench into your schedule. I can't imagine not coming down on somebody. I mean, just, just thankful. Oh, they're on top of it now. Um, I'm just glad it wasn't a bigger disaster. Thank God no one was in there. University officials say the investigation has to conclude before they can decide what happens to the building in the future. In other news, after a lot of controversy over whether or not to mine more than 15 million tons of copper just north of White Sulphur Springs, the Department of Environmental Quality has weighed in whether or not that the Black Butte project would harm local water sources. Environmental impact statement is out. MTN's Madeiras Babb tells us what it says and how people are reacting to it. Back in 2015, Tintina, a company owned by Sandfire America, hoped to begin mining about 15 miles north of White Sulphur Springs. The project, which is named after Black Butte, which is standing right to my left, is expected to bring in over 200 jobs, mining about $3 billion worth of copper. However, the project was delayed due to environmental concerns. The Department of Environmental Quality looked at these and says there is no reason to believe that there would be any impact to the river, including water quality, air quality, and aquatic life. Staff attorney of the Montana Environmental Informational Center, Derp Johnson, is disappointed in the report, saying it is evident through other minds over the years that this is just not true. Uh, we just believe that this is the wrong mine in the wrong basin at the wrong time, and there's some places that should not be mined, and this is one of them. For others, the report is seen differently. Vice President of Sandfire America, Jerry Zig, says from the very beginning, it has been important for Sandfire and Tintina to make sure that Sheep Creek and the Smith meet environmental standards. It's a good example for other people in other places to look at as, uh, as, as how it can be done in a good way. 
in an environmentally responsible way so that we can have mining, we can have a good environment, all these things can come together. Zig hopes the start of the 20-year mining project will begin in the third quarter of 2019, but before that can happen, the public will have a chance to give their opinion on the DEQ's report. Reporting from White Sulphur Springs, Madeiras Bab, MTN News. Now Madeiras tells us people can express their opinions coming up at Park High School in Livingston on April 29th, then at White Sulphur Springs High School on April 30th, or you can go online May 1st or May 2nd. There you go. Yep. Get, the, get your voice heard. Yep. Now, if you're in Butte or if you are heading to Butte on Sunday for St. Patrick's Day for the big parade, parking will be restricted on some streets and uptown Butte will be closed altogether to traffic by Saturday afternoon in preparation for the big celebration. Yeah, traffic will be restricted on Main Street between Granite and Galena Streets and on West Park Street between the parking garage and Wyoming Street. Closures will begin at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. They'll reopen at 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday. St. Patrick's Day Parade will begin on Sunday, 1230 in the afternoon on Granite Street. I think this year especially, I think with, with kids out, out of college, um, it's been a long couple of weeks with the weather, so I think we're expecting a big crowd. Oh, I think so too. The uh, St. Patrick's uh, Day Parade again will begin on Sunday at 1230 in the afternoon, Granite Street. You can see it live on our website by using KXLF KBZK News app. And Chet will be hosting that fabulous Caitlin parade. Corbett and I will be standing up there on yes. the parade, direct out in green, uh, watching all the uh, fun that uh, is the St. Patrick's Day Parade. That'll be a good be time. A blast, yeah. It is time for a quick break. In just a moment, the state's largest electric and gas utility, Northwestern Energy, is in the middle of its first ever major electric rate raise in 10 years. When we return, Mike Dennison reports on the hot topic. But first, we're going to check in with Gail King to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead and only on CBS This Morning. The parents of Azriel Clary, one of R. Kelly's girlfriends, tells us why they fear for their daughter's life. Plus, a behind the scenes look at what it takes to make Facebook's new virtual reality platform. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.